welcome to our first episode of Ask the Editor. My name is Brianna and I am the creative team lead here at Archaeus Creative and let's uh, answer some of your questions. So we're going to start with something that we hear a lot of and that is the vertical crop for Instagram. And I know, I know it's not ideal and I realize that it's not the way film is supposed to look and it can be really annoying and it's not fun to try to crop in your work, but video on Instagram is huge right now. And our friends over at Love Stories TV says that it's really the way that people are viewing it. So you're gonna want to go ahead and create a new sequence. And in the new sequence window, you're gonna click settings and set the editing mode and time base how you normally would. So if you're shooting on a DSLR, you're gonna set it to DSLR and then what uh, frame rate you're using. So 23, 0.976, 30, however you're going to deliver your film. So you're going to set the video frame size to 864 by 1080 and that is going to give you the vertical crop that allows you to use the most viewing space in the Instagram timeline. You're going to want to make sure though that the pixel aspect ratio is set to 1.0 or square pixels. And then if you want to create content for your Instagram story, the frame size for that is 1080 by 1920. But again, you want to keep the pixel aspect ratio to the square pixels. Once you have all that set, in the bottom left of the window is a save preset button. You can save all these settings and then just name them how you want to remember them. So Instagram stories, Instagram vertical, and that way you don't have to reset it every time you're going to create a trailer. It just shows up in the custom bin at the very bottom of the sequence presets window. Okay, so now that we have our sequence all set up, you can start building your teaser or if you have a teaser already made for YouTube or for Facebook, you can drag it directly into this timeline. Since you're using a 4x5 aspect ratio, most of your shots should be pretty easy to reframe, so it shouldn't be as intimidating as you think. But just know that some of the close-ups are still going to look a little funky, so you're going to have to choose one way or the other which way you want to show it. But most of your wide shots should be fine. Now once you've built out your timeline accordingly, you can export it just with these settings in mind. I would choose for your video codec the H.264 as MP4 is the best file format and H.264 is the preferred codec for Instagram video. You're actually going to get a small file size but still maintain a decent quality. Now that you have your export all done, you can just get it over to your phone and upload directly to Instagram. I do recommend this version of the vertical crop rather than like the perfect square or the landscape because you can really take advantage of that full viewing space when people are scrolling through their timeline. Just keep in mind that it is going to look different on your actual feed where it does crop into a square. So when you're setting your cover image, make sure that when it crops to that square on your feed that it's still going to look good and it's not going to be like a weird close-up of someone's face or something like that. So pick something that's wide enough that it'll look good in that vertical crop but also in that square crop. And then our next question was, how do we batch transcode? Batch transcoding footage comes up a lot if you're delivering any sort of raw media to your client. So you're filming for a whole day or possibly a whole weekend, and then if a client orders raw footage, you know, you're stuck with hundreds of gigabytes or possibly terabytes of footage, and it's going to take a lot of hard drive space if you're going to send a hard drive. It's going to take a long time to sync via Dropbox or something like that. So if you want to transcode your footage, it's actually really easy in Premiere. So you're just going to create a new project. We'll call it Transcode Caitlin and Kyle. You're going to click the box next to Ingest, and from the drop-down menu to the right, you're going to want to click on Transcode. This is also where you can create proxies if you're ever working with 4K footage and your computer's kind of like lagging on it. For the primary location, you want to choose the location that you see fit if you're working off your internal drive or off of an external drive. I would set it up as a new folder though, rather than keeping it in place with the raw media. If you're transcoding in the hopes to get like really small files for any sort of raw media deliverable, I would recommend the H.264 codec because it's going to keep it small yet preserve the quality. So once we have all of our settings set, we're going to click OK. And now that we have our project file all set up, we just need to import the media. And as it starts to import, Media Encoder will automatically open. Once all the files have loaded, you just hit the green play button up in the corner and just let it run. And then when it's all done, the footage is gonna load into that transcode folder. And then you just can pull that whole folder onto a hard drive for delivery. Another question we got was how do we organize our footage? 
And this is something I get asked a lot, especially when they hear that our office is comprised of different departments and different team members who have different skill sets. So we are fortunate in the fact that we have assistant editors and they actually will go through and organize and cull all of our footage. So the nice thing about that as a creative editor is when a project hits my desk, it's already organized and I know that everything in these timelines is what is usable. And what I mean by usable is it's in focus, it's relevant to that event, there's no aperture changes, there's no shake. Our assistant editors will actually go in and just cut out all the fluff essentially. So when I open up a project, it looks like this and we'll have three bins for kind of the big acts of a typical wedding day or weekend which is gonna be pre-ceremony, ceremony, and reception. And then if we have rehearsal footage, we'll also include a rehearsal dinner bin. So then within all of these bins, we have sequences for the different events that happen throughout the wedding. And then within the sequences, we have all of the usable footage that coincides with that event. So for example, in pre-ceremony, we have bride prep, groom prep, establishing shots for both, first look, anything that's gonna happen pre-ceremony. We'll keep everything in chronological order on how it happened throughout the day. If there's multiple cameras, we'll create, you know, multiple chunks within this. And then once it hits my desk, I will then go in and start reviewing all of that cold footage and then organize it into mini stories or micro events. So what I'll do is I'll start pulling similar clips, grouping them together based on the mini story that it could be a part of. So the bride getting her hair done, the bride getting her makeup done dress, shoes, etc. I will create little small sequences within my bride prep sequence and I'll keep them in chronological order because that's how I plan to tell my story once I actually sit down to start the creative edit. As I'm organizing my clips I'll start pulling up the selects onto the second line. I try not to pull too many selects because I don't want to have the edit too set in stone before I actually start. That way I can keep kind of an open mind and not get too stressed out about any roadblocks that are presented by kind of putting myself into a box before I even start. If there is a lot of footage for like a particular mini story or mini event, I'll even go further into the organization and start organizing it based on shot type. So I'll organize my one chunk of the bride getting her dress on into a wide, medium, and tight order. So that way, as I'm building out this story of her getting her dress on, I can move through the footage really quickly by knowing exactly where the wide is, exactly where the medium is, and exactly where the tight footage is. And that'll just help me breeze through that quickly without having to be like, oh, where was that really great wide shot of her full dress? Where was that nice close-up of her hands? I don't have to guess or review all of my footage again and again to find this. So it does seem really daunting, and it does seem like a lot of extra work but we found that it really does cut down on the actual editing time. Our editors are turning out first cuts every three to six days, and we found that this extra work on the front end of the project just helps things move a little bit faster, identifies any potential roadblocks, and just helps us craft a more intricate narrative. So I do encourage you to try some sort of organizational system because I think you'll find that it really will speed up your editing process. All right, and our final question comes from one of our Final Cut Pro users. And so I know I've talked a lot about Premiere and we do offer Final Cut services. So I wanna make sure that the Final Cut users are not left out. So this question was, what are the best export settings in Final Cut 10 for Vimeo, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and why? The options straight out of 10, if you're not a fan of compressor, will work fine for your social media cuts. So for Instagram or Facebook, the computer format will be your best bet in order to keep the file size small enough for those platforms while keeping your quality high. For the video codec, I would choose H.264 because like I mentioned earlier, that is the preferred codec on Instagram, but also on Facebook. For Vimeo and YouTube, I would stick actually with the default format of video and audio for the master file because you're gonna get a much higher quality export than the other offerings you have available. I would still stick with that H.264 codec though, especially if you don't have great upload speeds for your internet, you don't want to have this massive file taking hours and hours and hours to upload. 
So these two formats, the computer format and the video and audio, they're going to have the best bitrate available for you, especially if you're working with 4K footage. Both of these settings will get you better results than the web hosting or Apple devices. Web hosting and Apple devices don't have the best bit rates, so you're going to end up with a much lower quality export, and all of these apps are going to put a crazy amount of compression on your exports no matter what. So yes, you're definitely going to want to get the highest quality export you can get in the smallest package, which is what you're going to get from that H.264 codec in my opinion. If you are familiar with Compressor, you do get a little bit more control over your settings. I think, honestly, for Instagram or Facebook, because the amount of compression they go through, taking it straight out of 10 with that computer format will be just fine. But if you're looking for something a little bit more high quality for YouTube or Vimeo, I would recommend Compressor. In Compressor, you're going to want to add an output. And from there, you're going to go to Apple ProRes 422HQ. It's going to give you one of the highest quality exports, again, especially if you're working with 4K footage. Under the Video tab, you're going to want to change the QuickTime settings to H.264. And then in this window, in the bottom left, under the Quality, move that slider all the way to Best. That's going to give you the highest bit rate that compressor will allow. With these settings in mind, your video is going to come out at a much higher quality, but still keep that small form factor that H.264 allows you. All the platforms are going to further compress your work no matter what. So yes, you want to try to give them the highest quality export you can, but it's going to get compressed so it's not going to look as good as it does on your computer. For social media, these ones straight out of Final Cut 10 will do the job for you and they're still going to look really good. All right, those are our questions for the week. Thank you so much for your questions this week. We look forward to answering more for you guys in the weeks to come. Please feel free to submit your questions to our website, or you can always email us at ask at archaiscreative.com. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.